Today, I'm going to talk about how to study meds for the NCLEX. Hey, it's Justine Buick, the NCLEX tutor. So I'm basically gonna be talking about some tips on how to study meds better. And then in the end, I'm going to show you some content for some medications and where to go to get that content. All right, so the first tip is to study meds by the classification. So I know that's nothing new for people, but that is really important to know the main classifications and what they're for. The second tip is to memorize the suffix or the prefix of the actual medication names. So a really common example are beta blockers and they all end in LOL. So instead of memorizing every single name of them, you would just recognize that they all end in those letters. The third tip is to know what the main reason the medication or the classification is for. So not the super obscure reasons, just what is the main reason why we would give this medication. Um, the fourth tip is to review the most common side effects. So you don't want to memorize the entire list of side effects, no one can do that, but you should know what the most common ones are. And um, it's hard to know what those are exactly if you don't have a good resource to study. The uh, uh, next tip is to know what the nursing considerations are for that medication. And I want you to know that side effects and nursing considerations go hand in hand, they go together. So. Uh, for example, if one of the side effects is hypotension, then you know your nursing consideration would be to check the blood pressure, make sure the patient isn't dizzy, all right, before you give that medication. And the last tip is to be aware of the most worst adverse reactions of that medication. And sometimes you'll hear me call it killer side effects or killer reactions. And so you wanna know what those are so that you can recognize them right away and then not let the patient take that medication anymore and probably have to save their life. All right, so I'm gonna go show you some medications and where to go to get this type of information. So these are my flashcards and we are going to go look at the beta blockers. So up here you can see it's asking, what is the indication for the beta blockers? And I have an, it's an antihypertensive, so that would be the classification and then what it's for, to decrease the blood pressure and the heart rate and to prevent myocardial infarction. So those would be the most common things that it's for. And you would give it a number on how well you knew that. So I'm gonna give it a five. Now, of course, we have to know what the generic names are and for those, remember, they all end in LOL. So instead of trying to memorize all these different names, you'll just recognize it right away when you see the LOL. Now the mechanism of action is something that I did not talk about in the tips. And I don't think that you need to know the mechanism of action for every single type of medication. There's just some that I think are important because it seems like you get asked more about that in uh, your NCLEX practice question. So now this one is the most common side effects for beta blockers. And as I said, there's a laundry list of side effects for all the medications, but you just wanna know what are the most common ones. So weakness and fatigue, bradycardia and hypotension and erectile dysfunction. And then for the next flashcard, instead of sticking all of the nursing considerations onto one card and the side effects, I broke it up so that it was easier to review. So the nursing consideration for the side effect of weakness and fatigue would be to caution clients to avoid driving or just other tasks that require them to be alert. So remember I said that nursing considerations and side effects do go hand in hand. Now the nursing considerations for bradycardia and hypotension would be to check the heart rate and the blood pressure and then to hold the medication if it's too low. So the nursing consideration for erectile dysfunction would be to let the client know that taking beta blockers along with their erectile dysfunction drugs can cause really bad hypotension. Now the nursing considerations for patients who have asthma or COPD or who are diabetic. So with these, I did put them together because I figured you probably could remember both of these. And you would want to use caution if the client has asthma or COPD when they're taking a beta blocker because it can cause bronchoconstriction when they take the beta blocker. So that would be an adverse reaction, like a killer side effect. They cannot be getting bronchoconstriction. So clearly they're not gonna be able to take that medication. 
Now, also with diabetics, it says that if you take the beta blockers, it can mask the signs of hypoglycemia. And so you would wanna be aware of that in case the patient got hypoglycemic on you, you wouldn't know it just by looking at them. So you'd wanna be extra cautious about those clients. So I have flashcards for all of the different topics for all of the different systems and all of those tips that I told you in the beginning, you can get all of that information by going to Brainscape and getting the flashcards. All right, everyone, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon, bye.